Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Mountain Blade Bannerlord and we're going to be doing the uh, top four. I was going to do top five, but then I was like, hey, I'll mix it up and I'll cut one off of there and that'll make it unique and super creative. So we're going to be doing top four best standard cavalry. So if you've played this game, you know there's a lot of different variation in the troops and there's... You basically have your st standard recruit trees from most of the factions. They'll have, you know, the ones where you, if you go to a town or a village, you'll be able to recruit uh, pretty standard recruits. They'll be peasants of some sort. You can upgrade them through the way. And almost everyone has a type of cavalry. Okay, are you with me so far? There's also, like, noble cavalry or noble units that we'll get into a little bit later. I plan on doing a special video for those because they're really a league of their own. Uh... And they're also harder to get. So these ones are where we're going to start off with. So basically this is going to be a ranking based on what they're actually useful for. So while uh, sometimes you'll have uh, troops that'll be like they'll have super, they'll be a super high two-handed level. But those troops aren't ever equipped with a two-handed weapon or a pole arm or anything that could be used two-handed. So it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to consider that a perk. And then I also take things like how good their armor is, in this case, how good their horses generally are, if their horses are armored, all that sort of stuff. So there's a lot of factors that go into this, but basically we're going to be ranking them. I'm going to be calling it an ATR, which is the average troop rating. You know how much I like averages. So uh, with that in mind, let's get started with number four on this list, which is the Vlandian Vanguard. So you can see the Vlandian Vanguard here has a very Vlandian look to it with a nice uh, flat helm with a lot of mail and uh, pretty good armor on the whole. Got uh, a coat of plates so it looks very cool. Mail boots, mail gloves. Uh, pretty standard looking guy. He's equipped with a uh, what looks like a bastard sword. But in effect it's a one handed sword. A nice long pole arm and a good cavalry kite shield. So uh, that's very interesting. Now let's take a look at his stats. So as you can see, he's down at the bottom of the Vlandian Footman tree, if you go through Infantry and then down through Light Cavalry into the Vanguard. Uh, his level is 26, his wage is 12, so he's, you know, th these are all going to be pretty expensive, so that's nothing to sneeze at. Uh, he's got decent stats in one-handed, polearm, uh, riding, and then athletics. I like to account athletics too because there are a lot of cases where these people aren't going to be on their horses. So as you can see, he's got 130, 130, uh, 130, and 60. So those are all you know, pretty solid stats. Uh, he actually has an average troop rating of uh, 112.5. And now, I know a lot of people when they hit the average, they're like, ah, oh, just add and divide. Well, more factors go into it than that. I know I had someone recently on a video dispute my average armor rating. Uh, I shouldn't say recently, it's like over a week ago already. But dispute an average armor rating on one of my videos. It's not just the numbers added and then divided. It's more complicated than that. But anyway, um... This one has an average troop rating of 112.5. Uh, again, like I said, perks being nice, decent, heavy armor. Uh, pretty good helmet despite having the open face. Nice long lance. Good one-handed weapon. Nice shield. Uh, decent horses, and uh, have they're pretty well armored. So got good perks, but all in all, it's not the best cavalry on this list. So that's the Vlandian Vanguard. Let's see these bad boys in action a little bit. So since we've got... Look at all this cavalry. So majestic. Attack! It takes a while to build up an army of each one of these, so I hope you appreciate that for the videos. But let's just see how devastating their initial charge is. Now, where these guys are going to shine is going to be, uh, like I said, that initial charge is just deadly because they're going to come in there with their pole arms down. They're going to, generally speaking, kill at least one troop per unit on their first charge. I mean, it doesn't always work perfectly like that, but, uh, you know, and this isn't even a perfect cavalry field, but they are, they're pretty decent in that regard. Uh, but then when they get unhorsed or when they break their lance, they have that one-handed weapon and they have that shield, which really, really makes them a very versatile troop. So I'm not going to help them. I'm just going to see how they do on their own. To be fair, this isn't a very big army we're fighting, but it shouldn't take long for these guys to wreck them. There we go. First one, hidden hand. I think this is their leader, so I will... I will try to do something to that guy. There we go. Yep, new core of the hand. I was right. So now we'll just let them do their thing. Okay. 
So as you can see, even not using them in a fully effective form, which would be, you know, charging, breaking, charging, breaking, going back and forth and sweeping through the line, which is the best way to use cavalry, especially have heavy cavalry. Uh, even without doing that, they take out troops no problem. I mean, yeah, we out outnumbered them here, but... So that was number four, the Vlandian Vanguard. Let's move on to number three. So at number three, we have the Sturgeon Horse Raider. And now this one was a... Uh, I wasn't sure if I wanted to count this one as cavalry or as a skirmisher troop. But in the end, I decided to go with Cavalry A because it's the best thing the Sturgeons have to offer, and B because they do operate pretty well as a Cavalry troop. Their armor isn't the heaviest in the game, and they definitely utilize some pretty decent throwing weapons, but they also have a one-handed weapon and a shield. So, anyway, with that in mind, let's just take a look at how they look in the troop tree. So as you can see, they are the maxed out through the Woodsman tree. So you go through the Brigand, the Hardened Brigand, and then you get the Horse Raider. And so... For the Horse Raider, you have a level of 26 and a wage of 12. I believe it's the same as the last one. And their nice high skills here are going to be their one-handed, which comes in at 130, throwing, which is 130, riding, which is 130, and athletics, which is 80. So, again, it's going to be pretty similar to the last one. These ones here have lighter armor than the last ones, but their throwing weapons make them kind of a half cavalry, half skirmisher troop, which I think really helps. Uh... Their horses, again, are lightly armored, but they're going to move faster for that. So it was a difficult calculation, but basically the way I did it was testing them up against each other. So I was trying the Sturgeon Horse Raiders against the Evlandian Vanguards. And almost every time, especially with equal numbers, the Horse Raiders would come out on top. So that's why they take the number three place. So let's see them in battle. All right, look at them there in their lines. All right, so same rules as before. I'm not going to interfere too much. We're just going to see how well they uh, do against these troops. Uh, this isn't the most scientific way of measuring this. I know I'm going into these battles severely outnumbering the enemy, but I just want to... It's it's not really for the scientific stuff. I did all that off-screen when determining their rankings. Uh, on screen here, I just want to see them kill the bad guys. So... Mengus the Red gained a skill point in riding and is now 103. That's good. Yeah, see, so they're gonna they're gonna do that initial skirmish and just look how deadly those uh <laughs> those javelins are. Their whole army is almost almost entirely wiped out. So that's what I'm saying. Yes, I know they're they're probably closer to a skirmisher troop, but unlike most skirmisher troops in the game, they're equipped with a good uh one-handed weapon and a shield, which, you know, makes them equally as deadly when they run out of their pole arms. So, look at that. Already won. Definitely a great troop. I just, these guys are awesome in combat, especially in high numbers like that. So, that was number three. Let's move on to number two. So, at number two, we have the Batanian Horseman. And here, you're going to see that we're returning more to a standard, uh, more horseman-y feel to it. So, this one, uh, they have a couple advantages to them. A, a nice long spear. Uh, B, their secondary weapon is an axe, which actually has pretty decent, uh, damage. Their shield is a little small, but for cavalry, that's okay. Their armor is mixed. It's what I'd probably call medium overall, but you've got light gloves, light boots, light helmet without much protection there. Decent hauberk, but not a whole lot going on. The horse has medium armor, but it's definitely got armor, so it's got that advantage to it. Uh, in the troop tree, you can see there's, uh, for the Batanians, they have a skirmisher too. So this one over here is going to be down through the clan warrior tree, all the way down at the bottom. Uh, we're going to see 26 and 12 again, which is standard here. For strength, this one has a one-handed of 130, a polearm of 130, and a riding of 130 with an athletics of 80. So exactly the same strong stats as the Sturgeon Horse Raider. This one gets an advantage over the Horse Raider with that nice long lance, which helps with the initial charge. Better secondary weapon and uh, overall better armor, armored horse, you know, etc. So let's see him in combat. Yeah, look at him there. Excellent armor. Just fantastic troops. Yeah! So we're going to charge through the woods, which feels right for the Batanians. So now, again, this probably isn't going to take out the uh, enemy as quickly as the Sturgeons did, but it's important to keep in mind, although they seem super overpowered, once the Javelins run out, they're not quite as good as uh, the rest of the troops on this list. They're still better than a lot of cavalry in the game, but not quite as good as these ones. Hell. 
Starting to take them down, mercenary scouts. See, it's not all just recruits. I'll just watch with pride as my uh, as my battalions just wreck these mercenaries. Alright, so that was number two. Let's move on to the best cavalry for the standard cavalry in the game at number one. So at number one, we should have no surprise, but the Kuzate Heavy Lancer. Let's look at that bad boy. All that nice heavy armor. Fantastic super armored horse. That's awesome. So let's look at him in the troop tree. So in this one, there's going to be quite a bit of cavalry because it's the Kuzate, so that makes sense. And we're going to be in the Tribal Warrior and then down to the right side. So the Kuzi Kuzate Heavy Lancer. We're going to see it boasting stats of level 26, wage 12, of course. And then the key ones to take away are one-handed of 160, a polearm of 160, uh, riding of 210, so these guys can really sit a horse, and athletics of 50, making them pretty good on foot still. Again, we're going to see perks of nice heavy armor. Uh, the gauntlets aren't as heavy as they could be, but, you know, can't complain too much there. We have that nice lamellar armor, otherwise super protected helmet. Uh, chainmail skirt goes all the way down covers most of the legs then we of course we have the horse with really decent heavy armor so this one has an atr or average troop rating of 145 placing it significantly above the rest so in a straight cavalry to cavalry conflict uh without taking skirmishers and archers and spearmen all that sort of stuff in effect you know just charge on charge these kuzate heavy lancers just dominate the field as far as uh, standard cavalry goes so let's see these bad boys in combat all right, look at them there. Rank upon rank of just badass Kuzate warriors. Attack! Like I said, one of the big things that helps these guys stand out is their incredible horsemanship. Which in a great big cluster like this you may not notice as much, but when you're out on the field and you've got less than, you know, an entire army of just these guys, a group of 20 or 30 of them supplement an army like you wouldn't believe. They just break through and they smash everywhere. Uh, as you can see, they're already doing a decent amount of damage to the enemy forces, which for some reason thought a good defensive formation would be to spread themselves thin over two hills and down through the valley, you know, so the heavy cavalry could <laughs> crash right into them. Uh, but no, these Kuzates, it, like I said, it shouldn't be a surprise that they take the top spot on this list because the Kuzates, I mean, cavalry is kind of their whole thing. Um... With all of that in mind, like I said, this uh, ranking is not perfect, but it is pretty accurate. And I kept it to four just because these ones do fit the best definition of uh, heavy cavalry out of the standard troop trees. Um, so, you know, you may question some of the choices, but that's the thought process I used. It's, of course, their most important damages, riding, all that sort of stuff are factors. As I pointed out before, armor, how good are the horses, etc. So there's a lot of factors, but I believe it's pretty accurate. So that was the top four standard best cavalry in Mountain Blade Bannerlord. I hope you like this video. Uh, I, of course, invite you to share any disagreements you may, ha may have down in the comments below. You know, if you thought someone else should have been on this list or should have been ranked higher on this list, let me know. Uh, and we could have a nice discussion about it. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.